Hello, and welcome to an open source live code hangout. I don't know what episode this is, <laughs> but we're gonna work on a uh, task today. We are gonna work on making fake data. I got my ectoplasm. Basically, I need to have some data in this project so that we can develop new features and show how the project works without manually creating a bunch of demo data. So I'm going to create a sim single command that sort of builds out a small system uh, with homes, residents, and some activities just to get the feel for it and try to do that within one hour. Then I'll build on that learning in a subsequent task probably for more elaborate dummy data. So you can see our source code is on github.com slash Jerry life slash caregiving. And I'm working on the following issue. I just realized there you go. I had turned off the stream elements overlay. I'll have to work on the uh, overlays a little bit more. <clears throat> we want the chat overlay but not the emoji bomb one. I have to disable that one because that really slows down my computer. All right, so let's start a branch. We've got the code locally here. We'll create the initial make fake data command. Now this is a common command. It's gonna make uh, fake data for all of the apps or most of them. Per yeah, I mean, almost all of the apps here have some kind of model. Let me just reload this so I don't have the thing. Django rough, have some good support improvements for the Django and rough plugins here. Excellent. All right. So we have a common app and inside of each Django app, there's a common structure and we can create custom command line uh, commands called management commands. So I can create a new file and it's in the management manage commands and then the command is just whatever the command is you want to type in the name of the file is the command you want to type make fake data dot pi so management commands make fake data and there's a couple of examples here where I've got other management commands here's one make fake activities so we'll just take a quick oh that one has been defined but it was an O because I refactored the activities. Um, we'll qu take a quick look at the structure, but essentially it's a class that inherits from base command. And we just call it command by convention. And I'll need a bunch of factories, the factories so I can create uh, all sorts of data, but we'll start here with the homes. So I'll bring in my imports and um, We need a couple of these. We got resident and resident C. The, uh, the difference is that resident is like a person and resident C is when a person lives at a home for a particular time frame. Move in and move out. Believe it or not, that probably sounds obvious, but it wasn't obvious when we first started creating this uh, prototype and that people move in and move out. So, you know, as you build a project, uh, you're making a model of the world and certain details either aren't relevant or uh, aren't obvious <laughs> when you start out and that changes over time. Okay, so the structure is this. We have a command class, we want some help text and we are going to define, um, I'm probably not gonna need any arguments on this one. It's just gonna set up the app. So just the handle function. Anyway, let's grab this whole thing real quick. And uh, you can see that Copilot is already going to uh, suggest some things for me. For now, it's just going to create fake homes, residents, and residencies. And Copilot might, uh, let's just see what Copilot suggests if I go there for a minute. Resident number verification, home factory create, resident create, residency create, home, and resident. 
So this is cool. That would create five homes with each home having one resident. I'm going to create some configuration variables here. So, and these could become arguments. Number of homes, 10. Number of residents, per home, five is good. So, I'm not gonna make it too complicated where we would have multiple residencies per resident. At this point, oh, and I just realized, I just realized this should be a range. And 15, uh, let's see, let's see, 7 to 60. It's big. The reason is we want to have a distribution of activity levels. I'm going to give um, Copilot a little bit more context to show down the road where we're heading. We're heading to the metrics, the activity, resident activity. So that way, Copilot can kind of inspect all of this to see if I need any import for that. I'm going to select a random number in the range, 7 to 60. Random choice. So we need to import random. We're just starting at the home level right now. Okay, so we've got all the context there. Let's see what Copilot generates now. So create homes. So it is. <laughs> Hmm. Craziness. So we get 10. Uh, okay, this is the problem though. No, maybe not. It knows that we can create 10 residents. And then it knows that we need to link those residents with resident factories. Wow. And then it knows we're going to get a random number of resident activities. But here's where it gets a bit tricky. This is not correct. And if I check, this is really cool. I didn't know about this syntax, create batch, and in the bulk create, this is great. Um, if I check this, I would like it to be within the last 30 days. And by default, the activity day is just Uh, it's just a date field, so we're not passing anything in. That, that wasn't the factory, that was the model. Okay. So it's using the bulk crate from Django here, which is cool. But I think if I don't use such syntactic sugar here, if I use just a regular iterator, it'll be a little easier to follow and maybe less error prone. I'm not sure that this will even work. The bulk create can take an iterator, an iterable T. So this would create an iterable of resident activities. The problem is this is too fancy. I want to create a random date within the last 30 days here, and I can't really do that in this. Uh, this would this would generate an iterable activity equals. 
Now, this is a good point. It's looking at the residency start date and uh, making a meaningful choice. <laughs> based on that. That's a good consideration. We want the activities to be within the residency time frame, but for the time being, I'll just do create an activity within the last 30 days. So now today, today equals the date today. equals today minus random integer random type so let's look side by side real quick it helps my mind where is my mind resident activity date residency home activity type caregiver role This is interesting. Let's see what this does. I don't know if I need the zeroth one. I think it should just return. Does it return a random list? Oh, I didn't want to run this over actually. Actually, this is from metrics models. From import random. What does that do? Oh, activity type. Oh, okay, so it's returning a tuple and I need the zero with item, it's right. And then activity minutes, random integer between 30 and 120. Now I sh shouldn't really use these magic numbers here and here zero to 30 and then this we that and then random activity minutes range 30 to 120 Yeah, that way we have explicit names for things and I can configure the whole thing, mostly up here, all the parameters right there at the top. And these could be arguments to the um, command, but I'm not sure we need to really do that. see what's happening here okay I have a syntax error so I need to do that last n days stole my caps lock on there it goes. so we're creating resident activity object we have activity minutes caregiver role uh, Random choice, caregiver role choices. And then group activity ID, more or less, we'll just generate that. This is nullable. Equals, now to UUID field, which is nullable. So let's leave that alone. We'll consider it later. So I think uh, we've gotten down to the level of detail I was hoping for. Create help residents residencies and uh, uh, resident activities the code is fairly mm, readable I'll just put these here so I'm not inlining so much and in activity minutes also so I do the logic and then I use the value activity minutes type activity minutes There we 
to go. So this is just, there's nothing to think about here. I just see the direct mapping. And I can check the logic up here. It just helps me to organize my thinking. All right, so I think we can test this out. Now this is a range and it's summing that. So this is kind of a strange, I could count it. So let's see, equals zero. Well, that one I, I know right away because I'm gonna do that. Residence created. And this is not correct since I'm choosing a number from a range. So for each of these, plus equals one, residency is created, plus equals one, activity created. I don't know if I have to save that. I don't think so. Plus equals one. There we go. The reason I'm counting both of these is we may decide to have a differing a number of residencies and residents. There would always be pretty much more equal or more residencies than residents. Let's try it out. So if I reset the database just by deleting it. We'll migrate in all the schema changes drink a little bit of ectoplasm. Now we'll, we'll try the command. And the command is just the same as the Python file name without the extension. <clears throat> Can't open the oh, Python manage, but it's a management command. All right, I see what I did wrong here. So this is essentially a copy and paste code. Oops, or in other words, it's um, L uh, M L L M <laughs> generated data, and I didn't review it closely enough. So what I can do is, if we want, I could put TQDM in the project, and we can see the progress of this. But I can hear my CPU working. Um, TQDM could be a good addition. It's not too many dependencies, I think. And then we just take an iterable, and we're doing something with it. And it shows you what's going on. Hmm. Looks like there's some security improvements on PyP and maybe potentially some abuse going on. Malicious users and malicious project in the past week has outpaced our ability to respond. Crazy. Happy holidays. Man. So. Still working on it. A little bit of progress would be good. That's an enhancement I can add later. So I think the bulk of it is coming here. I probably have too big of a range of activities when we get into the, we're multiplying all these basically. I should have started smaller. That's another reminder. When working with data, working small batches at first, you know, take a subset of the data or uh, emulate a smaller, uh, you know, domain, than you would otherwise be working with until you've got your code worked out then apply it to the rest of the data you know when writing database queries you can you know select a number of rows and try your aggregation on those for example or in pandas you can subset rows in a data frame but it's these mistakes we make over and over it's an easy mistake to make but you can see we're getting data written to the database we're not having any errors so the code is fairly readable. It seems like it's doing what I'm expecting it to do. We just don't have any progress, which is natural. I don't know if there's a Django progress bar built in. Django TD, TQDM. I don't know if I need a really integration. Just add it to self and it didn't quite make, it make sense. I mean, import TQDM and, and use it here is on this line is not that 
much different. I'm sure, not sure what the value is of this in addition to adding another dependency you know, or like, here we go. Created 10 fake homes, 10 fake residencies. Wow, 70 fake residencies. So there's something went wrong there. And then 2000 activities. So what happened here? For number, uh, am I printing the wrong thing? Yeah, I don't know why we have so many of those. Maybe there's something in my residency factory. Get over create. Crazy. Let's run the server. Let's create. A Super secret password. Run the server. Access it. Go to the homes page first, just to check. Hey, <laughs> it's looking good though. I'm just a little bit concerned about the number of residencies. I don't know what happened there. But you see the distribution of activity levels is looking, you know, random. And I think that's kind of natural. There's a lot of entropy and reality in, in these caregiving systems. But we have the full range. We have some inactive. We have some low, some medium, moderate, and some high. Very good. So at least in one case, you know, we have the full distribution here. So let's check that case out. We have all the residents. Very good. We have the activity types. This is great. And then we can do the same with work eventually too. Work is different than activities. Activities are what the residents do for fulfillment. The work is what the professionals do to make sure the um, things are, you know, the clean and operating efficiently. So there's like doing medication, sanitation work. We want to kind of get a sense of the overall wellness of the home, of the institution to make sure the staff are not overburdened, that they're doing well, and that the residents uh, ultimately are benefiting and leading fulfilling lives in a safe and clean environment. So yeah, so pretty natural distribution, uh, lots of types of activities, roughly proportional, but random. And then if I look at it, a given resident, I have to log in. Now that's actually, that shouldn't be the case. It should be the opposite. I should have to log in to view the home, but not the resident. We have this uh, idea of security through obscurity that we want the family to be able to view the resident anonymously. And we're by providing only anonymous non-personally identifiable information here potentially just the first just the first initial and last initial uh, but in any case and then they can see the activity just by knowing the url but as you saw when i'm viewing the homes i didn't have to be logged in here so that i have to fix this is a prototype right now we're not this isn't deployed in any system so at this point i can commit this and I mean, it worked. It just generated too many residencies. If we go to the admin section, I can verify that. We have residencies, 71. Residents, 77. So that's actually correct. So perhaps, I mean, they should write, they should match. A bit concerned about that. 71 residencies, 77 residents. All right, so the number of residents is a random choice. Ah, uh, okay. Here's the problem my counter. I don't need a counter here because I'm choosing that number. All right. Well, for consistency, I could do this. It's the length of the residencies. Oh, and I'm in an iterator here. So if I do want to count. Might as well count the output. Although I could just plus equals that, assuming that this works correctly. Six of one, half a dozen another. And then, and then this is just individual, one at a time here. Now we should be good. Number of activities per resident. And this is one at a time here. All right. 
so let's make let's do this test. I want to get these counts correct. Delete the database again. Make my tolerances smaller. Make the amount we generate lower. I'm a residence per home. Two to three. Number of activities per resident. Two to three. Activity days ago is fine. Activity minutes. Number of homes. Three. Migrate the database structure. And then we will run our command. Make fake data. Here we go. And we have matching residents and residencies and then the fake activities. It's looking good. All right. So let's just say five homes, residents per home can be three to five. Number of activities per resident should be seven through 30. This is the benefit of having the configuration all live up here. So I don't have to scroll through here and grok all of the code and change the variables. I can just think at the high level of abstraction without the implementation details. Now what I will do is just add a, it's the same, okay. Doc string there and we'll run it one more time. Delete, call it in the morning. Migrate the database changes and make fake data it takes a bit long. So residencies and residents still match. We have five fake homes and 286 residency uh, activities. This will be really helpful. For demoing the system for development. Okay, so now you can see though, with the random choice, the distribution of, of uh, <laughs> that's interesting too. I'll have to truncate that. The distribution of activity levels is not as good. There's not as big of a chance. So I'll have to tune it, like tweak it a bit. Either increasing the size, which takes longer. We're using a probability distribution. I think this is just a uniform distribution, this random uses a uniform distribution, but which may be good. We could put more intelligence in there that each, we should have run one resident per activity range. So that's an enhancement. I'll have to wrap up this session. We got the basic working data though, generation. So that's perfect uh, achievement, low activity threshold. I think the simplest thing I can do now is just um, increase the number of activities per resident or shorten the range of days ago. We can see they're mostly low and inactive. If we want some people to be higher activity, um, the activity threshold is based on the last seven days. For the first iteration, I could just focus on seven days and then the number of activities per resident should be in the range of zero and ten, eleven. I think that'll by tightening that up, it'll give us a better distribution. Let me just try that one more time. Then I'll work out the thirty-day thing a little bit later because ultimately we do want to show that yeah, this thing records activities over thirty. 300 days, uh, the original prototype was running for, I think two and a half years, maybe three years. So we got a lot of data there. We at least demonstrated an uptake in the tool. <laughs> there was an upward trend in activity levels, but we're kind of extrapolating that that would be reflective of increased engagement. Uh, but we don't have any like concrete causal data to show that this actually had the impact we were hoping for. Um, but just strong intuition that when you bring information in it, uh, make caregiving visible that it does have a positive uh, impact on the community and particular people who were otherwise sort of invisible accidentally some of the residents were being overlooked and then we'll run a server and naturally the 
family was concerned, okay, we have a little bit better distribution here. And I think if I just pick more residents per home, like five to 10, which is sort of more what we're dealing with, we would have a more full distribution. I'll run it one more time. It's 9 a.m. I gotta go head out to migrate, make big data, takes a bit. Interestingly, okay, Bonnie is inactive, so of course Bonnie is not gonna show up here. That could be an improvement I'd make to the chart. In the long run, we'll be looking at 30 days of data, so there'll be a likelihood of everybody having done an activity in the last 30 days. More residents didn't hit the high threshold, so we'll increase the range here, strangely. High, I, oh, maybe I'm just misremembering that. High should start with 10, which I, I can actually pull this out. I just recalled, I can pull this out of our constant, our global constant, but it's not a big deal. One more time, just one more time. It's not a super tight deadline, the 9 a.m. thing. Migrate. I'm excited that this is cool. I'd like to sort these alphabetically. So now that I have fake data, then I can start seeing the system, you know, operating as it would in a more natural context and we can find, oh, uh, there's some little improvements we want to make. Uh, these labels should show up. So there we go. Now we're cooking. This is exciting. This is going to open up a lot of, you know, possibilities for development, for new contributors to come in and uh, get a nice environment set up to see the system, how it works and then work on their small task. Hopefully our tasks will be relatively small in scope generally and run the server as well as demonstrating this. Okay, there we go. So now we have a better distribution high and I might use a different color to distinguish the high from the low, but essentially we believe we should target the green area and uh, not be too high, too low. So that's uh these are kind of warning zones in the danger zone here of inactive. So here's a home. We got the full distribution high, sort of by name. Very cool. All right, so I'll wrap it up. I'll commit these off. Uh, let's just say add initial make big data command. And it's going to lint that for me. We'll publish the branch. So this has been another open source live code hangout. If you'd like to follow along with this project, we're at github.com slash jerry live slash caregiving fully open source you can see the pull request i just opened here for just these specific changes okay well i hope you're doing well 